Hey guys, so something I want to mention before the tutorial actually starts, because I forgot to mention this throughout the rest of the tutorial, uh, but when you're using my custom rig, uh, luckily I've saved this rig out as a tool so we can just constantly uh, be loading it uh, into our workspace and using it again. Uh, but you'll see that uh, when you've actually got the rig, if I actually just pose this quickly, so I'll just bring those arms down. If I uh, keep it on bind mesh and I click on T pose to sub tool and go out of here, uh, the rig has been lost, right? Uh, because we can't go back into there. There's no way to retrieve uh, that rig again. So we'd have to build it from scratch. Uh, but luckily when you've imported the tool, you'll still have it in your workspace. So all you'll have to do is uh, you'd go back to the rig over here you'd click on uh, store TM rig it's gonna copy it like that and you'll go back to your posed character and you'll just click on paste TM rig and it's just gonna go ahead and it's going to paste that rig uh, on your character now it's gonna paste it's going to paste uh, the T pose rig uh, on your post character so what I would actually recommend doing to take this a step further uh, let me undo this I'm just going to open up ZBrush again. Uh, so what I would recommend uh, recommend doing is while you're still in this posed uh, workspace, I would recommend actually saving uh, these posed, your posed rig as a tool. So I'll just go to save as and then save that out as a tool. And then this is for any reason if you actually want to come back and you want to make changes to your posed model, then you've got that uh, rig in that particular pose that you can just load in and continue uh, modifying. So that's just going to save you a little bit of headaches guys if you want to jump uh, back and forth uh, between using the rig. Uh, you can either just load in the tool again as a T-pose or just save that pose state as a tool and then load that in and you can continue uh, working on it. All right. Hey guys. All right. So in today's tutorial I'm basically going to be showing you how we can uh, set up and use this rig with any other character within ZBrush. Uh, I'll be showing you, I'll be uh, basically transferring this rig over to a completely different character with a different sex. Uh, so I'll be putting this rig on a female and showing you how you can adjust it to different models. And um, I just want to give credit to Paul Gabari because he actually, uh, he was the one responsible for teaching me some of the techniques for setting up these Z-spheres for posing. Uh, but I've never seen anyone release uh, just a standard rig that can be transferable between different characters and uh, it's just it's just a nice way to speed up your posing workflow it makes posing uh, the posing uh, workflow a lot more iterative and you don't have to do any more masking you've just got all of these e-spheres and points that we can uh, manipulate so I'll be showing you how to do that later on in the tutorial and I basically tried to set up the z-spheres uh, in locations that make sense and uh, where they would actually be joints uh, so that uh, when it comes to posing, um, it's going to try and pose those joints as accurate as possible. Uh, but the rig is not perfect, guys. Uh, even a transpose master, whenever you pose in ZBrush, there is a little bit of post work that's involved. Like you'll probably have to go back and sculpt some more anatomy on there uh, to fix some errors. But this is going to, it's definitely going to speed up your, your posing workflow as everything is set up for you already in all those uh, particular regions that you need to manipulate. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so I'm, I'm starting on a fresh slate over here with ZBrush. I'm going to import a custom character. Uh, now again, these are characters from, from Daz, so the scale is going to be the same. But I'll also show you later on in the tutorial how we can uh, rescale our rig to a completely different and custom uh, character so that it fits within the body and we can start posing it. Uh, but anyway... I'm going to my fold over here and I'm going to bring in a female this time. You saw that that rig was applied on a male in the beginning, uh, but it doesn't really matter. I'll show you that that rig uh, basically works with any human character. So there we go. I drag out my female onto the canvas and we are good to go. Right, so once you guys have basically got your custom character within ZBrush, in order to use the rig, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and... Um, you're going to import the tool for that rig. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load that rig as a tool because that's what I've saved it out as. So I'll go to load tool 
and just go to my folder and find rig basic human so I'll load that in you can see it loads the rig with the male character over here and that's awesome uh, but before we actually transfer this rig over to our custom character there's something really important we need to do first and let's go back to our custom character and here by layers we actually want to create a new layer so what this is basically going to do you can see that our character is currently in the T pose so that means you'll be able to sculpt on here symmetrically so by creating this layer when we actually pose our character we'll be able to come back to this layer and if we put the number on zero we'll be able to go back to the T pose and if we put it on one we can go back to the pose state so that basically means that I can come back to T pose sculpt details on here go back to the post state and all of those sculpted details are basically going to transfer over to that post state as well so it creates a really fast efficient and a really creative process uh, for doing that as well so if there's any changes you want to make you can do that and you can transfer it over to your post state so we've got that set up and then uh, the next thing we need to do is um, before we can actually take this to transpose master we actually can't take this as a single sub tool we have to create another sub tool in here as well so what I'm basically going to be doing is I'm going to just mask an area over here on the model so holding down control left clicking just to mask that I'm going to go to extract put this on like 0 0.001 extract and click on accept just so there's another piece of geometry in the scene okay and now we can go back to our rig and what we're basically going to be doing is going to Z plugin, transpose master, and then you'll see an option here called store TM rig. So that's basically going to copy uh, the Z sphere rig into memory, and we'll be able to paste that on our custom character. So go ahead, click on that, and we'll see a message here Z, a Z sphere rig copied. And now we're good to go. So I'm going to go back to my standard or custom character. And now, since we have that second sub tool, we've got the layer set up. We can go ahead and uh, we can transfer that rig over to this character so in order to do that I'm going to click here on Z sphere rig and then I'm going to click on T pose mesh so that takes us into the transpose mesh uh, workspace and it automatically creates a Z, a Z sphere for us and this would be the basis where you would start for creating your own rig but I've already done that for you guys so again that was copied into the memory so all you have to do is click on paste it'll load take a little bit of time and there we go there's the rig transferred over from the male onto the female now uh, depending on how your character has been sculpted you guys are going to have to uh, manipulate some of these uh, Z spheres here to get it into position but it's not too hard I'm just going to give you guys the shortcuts quickly Q is to create a new Z, a Z sphere if for any reason you need to create one then you just press Q uh, W is for move E is for scale and R is for rotate so in this uh, particular case all I need to use is move I'm gonna make sure I turn on symmetry by pressing X and I can see that this is a little bit out of the body over there so making sure I can see this is here by the elbow uh, that's lined up I want to bring this back make sure it's lined up with the wrist there's a Z sphere for the hand and again just moving around looking at it from the top view making sure everything's lined up everything else seems to be fine uh, maybe I'll just bring this back a little bit bring that there and the foot bring it up a bit but everything else seems to be in place we've got our knees our thighs uh, we've got the pelvis area and the hips uh, we've got our joints here by the abdomen uh, over here by the chest and clavicle area so these manipulators will actually allow us to manipulate the breasts as well uh, here by the chest uh, we've got the clavicle neck area uh, there's a supporting joint over here uh, by the jawline as well and in the head uh, then we've got the shoulder support and some additional supports here by the shoulder the elbow and additional supports for the elbow wrist and hand now uh, this is version one so I'm probably still going to release a version where I'm just going to create Z spheres for all of these fingers so you can pose the fingers as well but anyway from there we good to go guys so we've got this rig transferred over to this character now in order to pose this you want to scroll down and go to rigging now this menu is uh, only available when you are using uh, transpose master and Z spheres like this you've got this rigging option so you click on that and we're gonna bind our rig to our mesh 
So we'll click on that and then using the shortcuts, I'm pressing R for rotate. And uh, this is really important, guys. I'm going to explain how to actually pose uh, using all of these joints uh, in the next part. All right. Okay, guys. So there's two things we need to click on in order to pose. Uh, we've got Z-spheres that we can manipulate. And then um, basically between Z-spheres, we have these links. So uh, the way we manipulate with these two different things is uh, definitely going to determine the way we pose our character. So just to show you guys, for example, uh, using rotate, if I uh, just rotate, so if I left click and I drag up or down on, uh, let's see, let's do it here by the, it will do it here by the elbow. But you see that when I'm rotating on a, on a Z-sphere, it tends to rotate it around like this 360 degrees. But if I rotate on, uh, let's say, Actually, let me do that example again here by the knee. Okay, I'm using the Z spheres to rotate, so you can see it rotates like 360 degrees around that axis. But now if I rotate on, on, a, on a link, uh, this is also dependent on where you're looking from. If I'm looking, from, if I'm looking at my model straight on and I, and I manipulate the link, it moves it left and right. And if I manipulate this link from the side, it moves it up and down. So knowing where to manipulate these links and z-spheres is what's basically going to determine how you pose your model. But you see there's no, you know, you no longer need to do uh, any kind of masking. Uh, and then I'm going to turn off a symmetry over here. That's also going to determine how you pose because now you can see I'm posing symmetrically. All right, you guys can see posing symmetrically over here. And uh, I can see maybe this shoulder joint might have to be moved maybe a little bit to the left. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to go out of bind mesh, uh, press W for move, and just move that into position. So like I said, you might still have to uh, move some of these joints uh, to the correct position to get something you're happy with. Uh, but once that's set up, guys, it, it should be good to go, and you'll be able to pose. So you can see no masking. I just use this. And um, now I'm doing it symmetrically. I'm going to go out of symmetry. Let's maybe move this leg back. Can move that forward. And uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, supporting joints, which also gives you a little bit more range of motion. That's why I added those. As you can see here by the knee, uh, giving you just a little bit more control over you pose uh, over how you pose that instead of having just one Z sphere over here. Uh, it's just giving you a little bit more range of motion. Um, same thing over here for the head. That's why there's a Z-sphere a Z sphere by the clavicle and by the jaw. So again, clicking on just on a Z-sphere. Sorry, I do that on the neck. Clicking on a Z-sphere is rotating at 360. But if I click on your left or right or from this side up or down. So again, we can rotate the abdomen and it uh, just gives us quite a lot of freedom. Uh, again, I'm definitely going to create some... Um, some Z spheres here so we can pose the fingers as well. Uh, but you guys can see that it makes the posing process uh, a lot more easier. I wanted something similar to Daz, so we can use this just to quickly uh, pose our characters. And obviously, this is just demonstration purposes. Again, we've got the feet over here. I'm not trying to get a perfect pose, I'm just showing you guys how it works. And again, here's those manipulators for the for the boobies. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm manipulating that axis. But if for any reason you need to manipulate this area, you're capable of doing that. Again, I try to place it in areas that make sense. Um, and yeah, so it just it makes the, pose, the posing uh, process um, a lot quicker perspective on just to see what's happening but you can see you can just quickly pose manipulate those joints and get something that you guys are happy with and then uh, once you're done posing you want to keep it in bind mesh and we're going to click on T pose to sub T so that's basically going to bring it back into this window uh, we've got our posed character over here you can see previously there T pose and that but now like I mentioned earlier with layers you can see now we've got a layer one. If I just click over here in the center 
and type in zero. Here we go, it takes us back to the T post. So I can go back in here, um, do some sculpting, whatever. If I wanna put some more detail on my mesh, and then I can just click here again and type in one and bam those details are transferred over to that post state so it makes for an interesting posing workflow uh, within ZBrush especially if you're working with humans so that's how you set that up and use the rig uh, now I'm going to be showing you how to use I'm going to use that rig on a completely different character custom character with a completely different scale and I'll show you how to adjust the scale and then it's just a matter of moving those Z spheres and points into a position so that you can rig it and start posing. All right. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead, import a completely different character this time. So import. Uh, let me just go to my folder over here with my base meshes. And I'm going to import normal base male VR. Drag them out into the canvas. And there we go. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to scale this guy. So if I put on the floor, I'm going to scale this guy pretty large. Something like that. So you can see this is for whatever reason. If your models are scaled extremely large or extremely small, I'll show you how to scale that rig. So here we go. We've got our guy over here. And you can see he's got a little bit of a, uh, a, a pose that's going on. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on divide. And again, before we do the rig, remember to create a layer so that you can go back to your standard A or T pose. All right, so again, subtool is a single subtool I need to extract just to have an extra piece of geometry in here. So 0 0.001 and extract, accept. Okay, so now I can go ahead, import that tool again. So just load tool. Rig basic human. Now you'll see that the rig, oh, by the way, I can just click on frame just to frame that. Uh, the rig over here is a lot smaller in comparison to our character, right? You can see, like, this guy is huge. So, as far as the exact same procedure, just go back to your rig, go to Z plugin, go to transpose master, click on store TM rig. These we already copied. Let's go back to our custom character. <laughs> Whoa, and that was <laughs> zoomed into the most inappropriate location. But anyway, got our character over here. We go into click on Z sphere rig, T pose mesh. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and paste TM rig, and it's gonna be really small. Here we go, there's our rig our skeleton, our armature. So in order to scale this up to fit a character that's like way out of scale, uh, all we have to do is while we're in this mode, just go down to deformation and scale it up. So we wanna make sure we're scaling on X, Y, and Z so it's uniform scale. I just go ahead, scale this up until it feels like it fits uh, correctly in your character. And then uh, if it's off center or whatever, we can offset this to left or right or put that on Y and go up and down like this. So that's just how you guys scale that. Then from here, again, shortcut, W for move. And we just want to go ahead and I'm going to move up my size over here. Just go ahead and uh, put this in the correct location. Oh, I'm going to make sure I'm turning on symmetry over there so that I'm posing it on both sides at the exact same time. Just trying to uh, make sure that the Z spheres are in the correct area. So like the elbow or the wrist. And I'm just going to move this back. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pose this quickly uh, for you guys. And I'll cut forward. Uh, but one thing, one more thing. Uh, this image over here, I don't know if I've changed the colors on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is, will give you a general idea of where the different joints are like the shoulders it's all color coordinated so if you guys get lost and you don't know where you should be placing z spheres or joints you can just use this image as reference okay so let me go ahead pose this and show you guys that i can pose a completely custom character uh, with a completely different scale all right 
Right, so you guys can see just a little bit, a uh, little bit of time spent just uh, making sure that all the points line up in the correct uh, area. You can transfer this rig practically onto uh, any any single uh, human character. Um, yeah, it's it's really easy to manipulate. Again, we're just literally moving Z spheres, and then uh, once we're ready to go. Again, we just go down to rigging, uh, we bind the mesh to our character, and then it's just a matter of adjusting uh, the appropriate uh, z-spheres. But you guys can see, again, I'm posing a completely custom uh, character over here. And uh, yeah, the lower the polygon count for the character that you're going to end up posing, uh, the easier it's going to be uh, to pose. Uh, but you guys can see it's a completely custom character. I can pose it however I want. Let me turn off symmetry, move his head. Uh, but it just makes the posing process a lot more intuitive, uh, a lot more easier. So kind of looks like this guy is maybe, I don't know, floating or something. Uh, but yeah, you can see the lower the polygon count. Uh, the easier and quicker it is uh, going to be to pose. And then once you guys are done with that, you keep it on bind mesh, T pose to sub T, and bam, there we go. We've got our posed character. Pretty cool. We can go back to layers, like I said, I put it on, uh, put that on zero. Uh, actually, you want to make sure it doesn't snap to a number like that try and place this like right in the center so try and click by A because sometimes I've noticed when it goes to random numbers the mesh can get like really messed up uh, so I just try and click like over here by A and then type 0 or type 1 uh, but there we go so yeah guys I hope this is uh, just something that can help improve and speed up your posing workflow uh, within ZBrush I wanted I wanted uh, the something similar to Daz. I was just getting tired of masking. I mean, you can do that. It is another effective way to pose, but I feel like the rig uh, just makes everything a lot more easier and uh, it makes the posing process a lot more creative and fun. And yeah, really easy to set up. I've showed you how to transfer it over to uh, different characters, even with a different sex. It works with them. I mean, it's basically just a skeleton and uh, how to transfer it over to completely custom characters at a completely different scale and we can pose them as well. Alright guys, so enjoy the tool and uh, as always stay tuned for some more tutorials and thank you for watching. Alright, goodbye.